Hi guys, David, Humble Trekker Channel. How you doing? Doing all right out there? Come and join me. Put up a log or a stall or squat on the floor. We're going to talk about Hawksbill knives. Very interesting blade shape. Always worth talking about knives. It's never a waste of time. And if you can sit around a fire and do it, so much the better. We've got a couple of Hawksbill folders here. Hawksbill refers to this particular shape of the blade. That's one name it's got. Well loved child has many names. These types of knives with this blade shape, this is an extreme version, it's a very broad version. But in particular, this type of blade shape is known as an electrician's knife, otherwise it could be called a pruning knife, a mushroom knife, or even a carpet fitter's knife or a carpet knife. Although these you see have both got symmetrical grinds. Carpet knives, in my world, my belief, they tend to should have a chisel grind in, in where it's a not a symmetrical grind. You've got one flat side and then an angle coming off of it. So it's, it's like a chisel. Thereby so you can get up against walls and have a very accurate cut on carpet still what they're called is not that important i mean the description of the name is what you use it for electricians use it because they're very useful for cutting around like that if you're cutting through insulation if you want to go through the insulation of a cable something like that they're useful for that type of purpose very functional very utilitarian knives we can talk about them in general but let's also do a little review of these two little folders this is a Stanley electrician's knife. This is uh, around a $10 knife equivalent and whatever currency you've got. It's fairly readily available online in most knife stores. And you see it's a two bladed knife. It's got the electrician's knife or the Hawksbill blade and it also has a sheep's foot blade. It's called the Stanley um, electrician's knife. That's its, that's its name. If you don't mind, I'm just gonna go and sit down. <coughs> Make this conversation a little bit more comfortable for myself so it's uh yeah it's around a ten dollar knife it's a functional knife that you're going to use uh, for working uh, it's a knife that i tend to carry in my um scout kit it's as a featured in a previous video of mine because i find it's a very useful knife it's a sturdy stubby little knife you can do a lot of things with it and it's one of these things that you know you don't mind it being in the bottom of a bag somewhere because it's fairly utilitarian and functional and it's not something uh, you want to have in a, in, a, in a show cabinet or anything like that. So you can put it in your bottom of your bag. And it's, you know when you pull it out, it's going to do a lot of good things for you. It's, some, uh, it's a stainless steel. No name stainless steel. It's very um, strong and stiff when you pull it out. It's got the two blades. Gives you, you know, a lot of flexibility and a, a backup there. If you do break a, break a blade and it's the only knife you've got on you. It's uh, wooden handles. A hard wooden, wooden handle, I believe with uh, three pins going through it. Uh, very nice in the hand and it's good to carry around in the countryside if you do, if you are mushroom humping, hunting, mushroom humping. This is gonna be a not safe for work video if we get into the mushroom mushroom humping uh, side of things. But no, it's not for mushroom, hu mushroom humping, it's for mushroom hunting. And also, and then you see, you can pull it around like this and slice in. It's called a pruning knife. It's, uh, you buy these, pick these up in garden garden stores uh, this type of shape of knife anyway that's the Stanley electrician's knife let's pull out the, uh, the the next one which is another budget knife it's I think the, it's retail price is $12.99 in the States but uh, I bought mine in Sweden and I had to pay considerably more than that but then again it did have to fly all the way from China to Sweden no I'm kidding it did come, it's a China made knife I don't know why it's so much more expensive in Sweden but it is and this, as you can see, this is a much more flashy, attractive looking knife, but still budget nevertheless. And it's got a titanium coated blade. And that's what, and it comes with a iridescent type finish on the blade. It is a stainless steel. The steel is, let me check, it's a 440 steel, stainless steel. And the, the handles, very nice handles. These are actually bone stained, bone, bone handles. I assume they're stained. 
and it's got an inlaid little plate there, Rough Rider. It's called the Rough Rider. Let me check, I've got the box down it. That's where I get it right. Comes in a nice box. It's called the Rough Rider Black Smooth Bone. I'm not quite sure the the name of this as a black smooth bone is, is really an optimal name for it, but there you go. If you go into a store and you ask for a big black bone, black smooth bone, you might get some funny looks, but that's what it's called. Uh, of course, it's a black bone on the handles. It means no more than that. It's got a lot of detail in it. The thumb nick is serrated. It's got a swedge on the back side. It's got an R for Rough Rider there. And on the little engraved plate there, I think it's two R's. I don't have the greatest eyes for close-up work, so I'm not sure what it says. And then it's got Made in China there, 440 steel in titanium on the blade. Out the two, this is obviously an attractive little knife. It attracts a lot of comments and so on and so forth if you get it out. But overall, I like the, the Stanley. It's a, it's a thicker stock. It's like two millimeter stock on the Stanley and you're only getting half, one and a half millimeters on the Rough Rider. All in all, the Rough Rider feels a little bit looser, not quite so tight. But the Stanley is, is not a show knife. It's a, it's a knife for electricians who are out using it every day and you pick it up from your hardware store. And it's, it's very substantial very positive uh, slip lock. They're both slip locks, I mentioned that, they're not locking blades. But it's a very positive friction hold when you open it up, give you good click. Good click, so it click, click. So a very positive opening and uh, on the knife. And there's the, the two blades. So of the two, I do prefer the Stanley Electrician's knife. It's a fairly odd shape. Is that a problem for sharpening? No, not really. Uh, primarily, you know, it's designed for cutting soft things. It's not a hard carving knife. So you're going to be cutting rubber insulation, going through boxes, pruning softer branches, taking mushrooms. So you're not going to be putting a, a lot of hardware on the edge. So you're probably only going to be, most of the time, needing to touch it up. So you can just use a, a diamond rod and that can just make it in small motions and take it around the uh, the curve of the blade. And with a soft strop, you can also use that. You know, to get this on camera, it's gonna be a little bit of a contortion, but you can use a soft strop and then that will actually mold itself around the curve of the blade. And really anyway, three quarters of the blade is basically straight which you can just treat as a regular blade. It's only in that, the, the acuter angle, the acuter turn of the blade, that it becomes kind of like an unusual sharpening object. <coughs> this soft strop I got from a, a viewer actually, the first guy who ever sent me something, who appreciated my videos and sent me something, and he sent me this strop, and this is a couple of years ago now, Swedish guy, I won't mention his name in case he, he doesn't want to be names because I've not spoken to him and he also sent me uh, this giant ferrocean rod so I really appreciate that thanks you know who you are if you're still watching you might not be because it was a couple of years ago but anyway I've still got it all thanks for joining me around the campfire for this little chin wag about Hawksbill blades um, electricians knives carpet knives swamp knives pruning knives whatever you want to call them whatever is the common name where you come from if you haven't got one you can pick out fairly cheap. There's a couple of real cheap items there. I just uh, reviewed. I think if you've never tried a Hawksbill blade, pick one up. You might be surprised what you can do with it. If you're a subscriber, thanks for being a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber and you've enjoyed this video, uh, subscribe. If you're a subscriber or not a subscriber and you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Get down in the bottom, tell me if you're a fan of Hawksbill blades. I moved the camera so the smoke wouldn't be drifting across it and of course the wind has changed direction and now the smoke is going straight into the camera. So hopefully you can still see my big conk through the haze of smoke. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, just thanks to all of you. Thanks for joining me.
this uh, YouTube channel of mine has been an adventure now for two and a half years. Uh, I really enjoy interacting with all the guys uh, in the comment section and so many, many of you I've become good friends with on the internet via the, you know Facebook, uh, social media and you know good chinwags with you on the messenger and stuff like that. If you want to uh, join my Facebook group, if you want to have a uh, conversation with me and other people who are often down in the comments section, like-minded souls, go to uh, my Facebook page and find the name of my group there. It's called The Man Cave. You know, we, it's kind of an outdoors bushcraft survival prepping type group, but with a lot of humour involved in it. The smoke's really coming back now. If you can still, can you hear me? Um, <clears throat> you probably can't see me, but you can hear me. Uh, there's, there's more humour there than a lot of the outdoor groups. There's, I'm in, involved in a lot of groups. You may see me around or see my comments around. Uh, but where they try and really focus and just keep it specialised, just talking about outdoor stuff and just skills and techniques. But in my group, we don't mind a lot of jokes because there is plenty of groups out there where you can, where it's, they, don't, they only allow discussions of techniques and skills uh, for the outdoors. But I allow, well, I say I allow, I enjoy having lots of jokes and just general uh, comments there, memes and stuff like that. You can talk politics there, whatever. I don't think, I don't have anything off limits. It's just a virtual campfire where you can shoot the shit. Well, this is a big rambling into the video, isn't it? The fire's dying down now. I'm gonna go make myself a cup of coffee and uh, come back here and enjoy the rest of the late summer sunshine. Take it easy.